Hello everyone, this is Anna with the Petumi Bee Company, and today I'm going to show you how to make this bracelet that I've designed using quadrilentals, two hole bars, and one of our Petumi Crystal faceted buttons here at the end. The materials that you're going to need for this bracelet include the quadrilentals, and mine here are the opaque champagne luster, the two hole bars, which you can see really well in the back here. Mine are a vintage copper, the 15 and 11 O's. My 15s are this claret, um, I'm sorry, these are the 11 O's. My uh, claret rainbow gold luster in the 11 O, and the sparkle taupe. This is my 15 O color. I'm also going to need, you can see here on the front, my four millimeter and three millimeter check glass. My four millimeter are these uh, check rounds that have this pretty pearl finish to them. And these are a pale blue color. And then the three millimeter faceted rounds are um, done in a crystal champagne luster. The tools that we're gonna use are, of course, my needle and thread. Um, I'm using a size 10 sewing needle, and then I am using a frost color wildfire in .008. I'm using the frost color because if you look at the side of the project, you'll see that you do see a little bit of thread coming through as I cross through the four holes of my lentils. So I picked a color that won't show and be really obvious against those lentils. So once you've got the color of your lentil picked out, you can pick out um, a thread that will kind of blend in. I'm also going to be using some super new glue at the end of my project. Um, and I've got my slip and snips here for when I need to cut my thread. When you're ready to begin the project, you're gonna start by making the back section first. So I'm going to take away my two faceted rounds, or my faceted round and my glass pearl, because I'm not going to use those right away. The only four beads that I'm using are my lentils, my two hole bars, my 15, and my 11 O's. And you can see those really well in the back of the project here. I've got my needle and thread here with a stop bead at the end. And the stop bead, um, Ali does have a video on it, so for those of you who haven't done that before, um, you can watch her video. But all you need to do is take your needle and thread and run it, loop it around a little bead, and that bead will just kind of stay in place so that you can pick up the first beads of your project and not worry about them falling down off of your thread. I've got a tail here of about um, eight or nine inches. I like to leave a long tail so that I can always use this later um, to do uh, a clasp if I, if I need to use that extra thread. I'm picking up an 11, a two hole bar, and an 11. And I'm gonna let all of these beads fall down to the end of my project, to my stop bead. I'm going to pick up a quadrilental and let this fall down as well. And I want to align my quadrilental with my two hole bar. So my quadrilental is going to have two holes on the bottom and two holes on the top. I want the two holes on the bottom to align with the two holes of my two hole bar. So right now I'm coming out the bottom hole in the back of my lentil. I'm going to move to the front of the lentil and I'm going to stay on the bottom. The whole first step or first length that I'm making in this project, the back length of this bracelet, I'm just working on 
the bottom of these lentils. So I'm not going through any of the top holes yet. Okay. So I've moved to the front of my lentil here and I'm going to take my needle and thread through my bar, through that open hole. I'm going to pick up another quadrilentil. And again, I wanna make sure that I get it aligned with my two hole bar so that I have two bottom holes and two top holes. Coming out the front bottom hole, going to move to the back bottom hole and I'm also going to take my needle through the first three beads that I originally picked up. So I've got my needle and thread coming through the back of my lentil, 11, the bar, and the 11. Oops, pull all my thread really nice and tight. Continue through the first hole of that lentil that I went through. Being careful not to get your tail of thread caught in the project, which I do quite frequently. And I'm now coming out the back bottom hole of that lentil. I'm going to move up to the front again, go through these three beads in front. So I'm going through my lentil, my bar, and my lentil again in the front. Give a nice little tug. And now I'm going to pick up a 15 and three 11s and another 15. I'm going to take these beads, take my needle and thread, and retrace my footsteps back through all of these beads in the front here, my lentil, my bar, and my lentil. So I'm essentially just making a little loop and pulling tight. So now my 15s and my 11s are snug up against the rest of my project. I'm gonna take my needle and thread back down through four of these beads. So I'm coming through my 15, my three 11s, and I'm not coming through that last 15. Give another little tug just to kind of loosen or tighten. We do not want it loose, we want to tighten the project. I'm going to take another three 11 O's, and these 11 O's, I'm going to do another little loop here. So I'm taking my needle and thread and running from the top down through my beads, through my three 11s only. So that when I give a little tug, those three 11s will now be snug up against the other three 11s. I'm going to come from the bottom up, go through these new three 11s again and now my thread is coming out the top of those new 311s that I just added. I'm going to pick up a 15, a quadrilentil, a two hole bar, another lentil, and another 15. I'm going to come back with my needle and thread through those 11s again and make another little loop with my thread. So that my new three, or these are five beads here that I've got, my 15, my lentil, my bar, my lentil, and my 15. Give a little pull. And so now these new beads are now snug up against the project. My needle and thread are going to come back through the 15, the lentil, the bar, and the lentil. 
again. So I'm now coming through that 15. Now coming out the back bottom hole of my lentil, going to jump to the front bottom hole of that lentil. Being careful to keep the project nice and tight. So if you do have some slack, just tighten it all up again. And now I want to pick up an 11 and bring that 11 to sit between my lentil and my bar. So I'm gonna run my needle and thread through the front, that open hole of my bar, pick up another 11, go through my lentil, through that hole that should be aligned with the front hole of my bar. And now I'm going to go back through these three beads and the, the, through these back holes. So I'm going to take my needle and thread to the back of my lentil and cross through these back three holes, these back three beads. Sometimes it doesn't want to go all at once. So I'm coming through my lentil, my bar, and my lentil, through those back holes. Give a little tug. Gonna move up to the front of my lentil again. Through the 11, the bar, and the 11 again. And I've got this little butterfly pattern. I'm going to add another little butterfly section next to this one. So to do that, I'm going to pick up an 11, a bar, and an 11. 11, a bar, and an 11. Bring my needle and thread from the bottom up through the bar 11 and the two 11s that I already have there. And so this is going to bring my new beads, again, snug up against my project. My needle and thread are gonna come down through my 11, my bar, and my 11, the new ones that I just added. So my needle and thread are now coming out the bottom of the project facing me. I'm going to pick up a two hole or a quadrilental. Make sure that it is aligned with the holes in my two hole bar. I'm going to be coming out that bottom back hole. I'm going to jump to the front bottom hole in my lentil, and I'm also going to go through that open hole in my bar. Pick up another lentil, make sure that I get it aligned. Coming out that front bottom hole, I'm going to jump to the back bottom hole. And I'm also going to go through that 11 bar and 11. And the quadrilental through that back hole. Coming out that back bottom hole of my lentil going to jump up to the front again, go through all three of these beads in the front, 
my lentil, my bar, and my lentil. Give a little tug. So now I'm going to repeat the steps that I just did here. I'm going to pick up a 15, three 11s, and another 15. Come from the bottom up through these beads again, my lentil, my bar, and my lentil. Give a tug. I'm coming down through only the 15 and my three 11s. Picking up three 11s. And then coming from the top down through these 11s again so that my new three 11s are sitting snug next to the three that I previously added. Come from the bottom up through those new three 11s again. And now I'm going to pick up a 15 quadrilentil, bar, lentil, and a 15, making a little mirror image of my project over here. A 15, a lentil, a bar, a lentil, and another 15. Let these beads fall down to the project. And I wanna come from the bottom up through my three 11s. And again, get my new beads snug up against my project. I'm going to come through my 15, my lentil, my bar and my lentil again through the holes that I've already passed through. Coming through that back bottom hole of my lentil, I'm going to move up to the front hole of the lentil. And now I'm going to pick up a 15 to go in between my lentil and my bar. Picking up that 15, going through that open hole of my bar, picking up another 15, and going through the hole in my lentil in the front. So now I have two little X's or two little butterfly sections created. At this point, I'm going to repeat what I did right here. So you can see I'm going to need to pick up, I'm going to go around my lentils here, I'm going to pick up my bars and my 11 O's and create another section here. I'm coming out the front hole of my lentil, so I'm going to go to the back and go through back all three of these beads again. Oops. Sometimes it's easier said than done. Jumping up to the front of my lentil. through my 11, my bar, and my 11. And now I'm in position to repeat from here, and I'm going to continue until I get the bracelet, the length that I need it to go around my wrist. I've now come quite a distance in my project and I've got it to the point where it is going to be just about the length I need to go around my wrist once. 
I am at the point here where I'm gonna add one more little section. I'm going to pick up a 15, my lentil, my bar, my lentil, and another 15. Let these guys fall down. I'm going to come back through the bottom towards the top through these three 11s. Back through my 15 and my lentil and my bar and my other lentil. Jumping up to the top hole in my lentil. Picking up a 11, adding that between my lentil and my bar. Picking up another 11, going through that bottom front open hole in my lentil. And now I've got the length of my bracelet complete. This is the bottom section, and you can see if I flip this upside down, it looks like the bottom of my finished bracelet. I'm now going to add the clasp at one end of my bracelet. I'm going to do the loop on this end here. To do that, I'm going to need to pick up about 26 of my 11 O's. So once I have these 26 11 O's on my thread, I'm going to come back through my lentil my 11, my bar, and my lentil. Pull that all tight. So I have a loop of seed beads that you can see are coming out the top bottom hole of my lentil, looping around and coming back into my project through that top bottom hole of the lentil on the opposite side. Now you can leave a loop like this if you want, and I would just go run back through it a couple times to reinforce it, uh, but on this project, I added just a little bit embellishment to the sides on the bottom there. And so to do that, if you like the look of that, what I did was while I was coming out this 11 O here in the center of my, of my base here, I picked up two 11s and then I took my needle. I skipped the first two beads in my loop and went through the rest of all of those beads until I got to the other side, stopping right before the last two 11 O's. So what I'm doing is I'm coming through here, back through my loop, and whether you're embellishing your loop or not, you always want to go back through it um, at least one more time just to give it a little extra strength since you will be kind of tugging at it um, when you're taking your bracelet on and off. So I've gone through that whole loop, 
stopping right before I get to those last two. I'm going to pick up two more of my 11s. And then I'm going to come through my 11 on the inside of the project here. I've come through my 11, my bar, and my 11. Give a little tug, and it just kind of helps to give a little extra, something extra to your loop there at the end. And if you want to test it out, just make sure that your button that you're using does go through that loop really well without much of a struggle. And this is my faceted, my Potomac Crystal faceted button that I'm using. Um, I have this in a mint luster color. Uh, one of my favorites is this mint luster and the champagne luster. Okay. We're now in position to begin embellishing the top part. We're now in position to begin embellishing the top of the bracelet here. Where I have my quadrilentals the furthest apart, I'm going to be embellishing with my pearls. And where I have them the closest together, I'm going to be embellishing uh, with just some seed beads. And then in this cross section here, connecting the two little sections that look like butterflies, I'm going to be using my three millimeter check glass and some seed beads. Your thread should be coming out this inside 11O of your project. I'm going to come, I'm going to jump up to the top hole in my lentil. And I want to do that on the inside of my project so that you don't see that jump up on the outside. When we were doing the base of the bracelet, we were using only the holes along the bottom of the lentil. And we were keeping that lentil aligned so that we had two open holes on the top. So for the embellishment, we're going to use all those open holes on the top. So now we're just using the top holes of our lentils. Going to take my needle to the open hole in my lentil that is sort of in the front there. Going to pick up a 15 an 11 and a 15 and that's going to be my little embellishment to bridge between these two lentils at their closest point here. I'm going to move up to the front of my lentil. I'm kind of coming out the back there. I'm going to move up to the front. And my embellishment here is going to be an 11, one of my, one of these pretty little pearls, another 11, and then I'm going to just bridge the gap here between these, between these two lentils at their widest. Going to take my needle and thread, come to the back of that lentil, cross through the lentil and the seed beads, and the lentil too if I can.
I'm now ready to make the little cross. You can see here, and make this little cross that crosses over the six seed beads that I had on my bottom. To do this, I'm going to pick up an 11, uh, I'm sorry, pick up at 15, three 11s, two 11s, and one of my check glass, one of my three millimeter check glass. So I have a 15, two 11s, and a, a three millimeter check glass. I'm going to pick up two more 11s, one more 15, let these guys fall down. And my thread will be coming out facing me through that top hole in the lentil. I'm going to take all of these beads and bring them diagonally across the six seed beads on the base so that now I can take my needle from the outside to the inside of my project through that first hole there in the lentil in the front. And give that a nice tug. I'm now in position where I can connect this little gap here between my lentils. And it's one of those small gaps. So I'm only going to need a 15, an 11, and a 15. bring my needle and thread through the hole in the lentil opposite the one that I'm coming out of. I'm going to complete my X. So I'm going to pick up a 15 and two 11s. And I'm going to come through this faceted round here. From one end to the other, cross through it, pull all my beads tight, picking up two more 11s and a 15, and then my needle is coming down from the top to the bottom, from the top down facing me, and I'm going to bring this needle and thread back through my lentil, three seed beads on top, and that lentil. So you can see as I tug, my threads come up, come down through, the, through my little check glass, coming around, and then back through these beads from this other section of my project. Now I continue through my lentil. So we have that cross finished now. I wanna get my needle and thread over to this section here where I can continue with my embellishment. So I'm gonna take my needle through the first line of beads that I added for my cross. It's going to be my 11, my 15s, my 11s, my check glass, my 11s and my 15s again. through the lentil at the top here again, through those three embellishment seed beads, through the lentil again, and now I'm ready to add one of these little embellishments in the center here. 
my needle and thread should be coming out this back top hole of my lentil. I'm gonna go through the front top hole. And I wanna pick up an 11, one of my pearls, and another 11. I'm going to take these beads diagonally across this section of four lentils and I want to come through the hole in my lentil kind of diagonally across. So it's the hole in my lentil on the top, sort of on the inside of that little cup. There we go. I'm going to bridge the gap here between these lentils. So for that, I'm going to pick up three 15s and I'm going to bring my needle through coming out this hole here. I'm going to go down through this hole and the lentil right next to it. Give a little tug. Pick up another 11, and I want to bring my needle and thread through my blue, my blue pearl. And then I'm going to pick up another 11, and I'm going to come through this top hole in my lentil. Oops, making sure not to get caught. Something I do quite a lot. So I've used all of these inside holes of my quadrilentils. Give a nice little tug. And now I need to close this gap here between these two lentils. So I'm going to pick up another 15, another set of three 15 O's, and I'm going to just bridge that gap there. Give a tug. My needle's coming out facing the inside of my project of my lentil here. And I need to get over to do my embellishment over to connect these two lentils. So I'm gonna cross through this 11, my pearl, and 11. And I'm crossing through in a diagonal So I can get to this lentil over here that is diagonally across from it. Go. So I've crossed through. I started out coming through this lentil. I needed to get to this lentil over here, so I went in a diagonal fashion across. I'm going to take my needle from the back to the front of my lentil. Pick up my little seed bead embellishment, which is a 15, an 11, and a 15. And I'm going to continue through that lentil opposite, the one that I'm coming out of. So now I've got one little section here complete. I've now walked you through how to do this little X between the sections and the little embellishment right in the center of those little cups. I'm gonna continue on a little bit more to give you guys just a little bit more instruction here. Repeating the steps that 
we've already done. I'm now going to make my cross. So I need a 15, two 11s, and my three millimeter check glass that I'm using in the center. And I'm gonna need two more 11s and a 15. Let these guys fall down. I'm gonna take all these beads, cross them up diagonally so they're going crossing from one section to the other, overlapping my six seed beads on the bottom, coming from the outside to the inside of that lentil in the top hole. I'm going to embellish right here between my lentils with my 15, my 11, and my 15. Let those fall down between the lentils. Cross through the hole opposite the hole that I'm already coming out of. Give a little tug. And I'm ready to complete my X. I'm going to pick up an ele um, a 15, two 11s. I'm going to cross through from one side to the other, cross through that center three millimeter check glass. And I've got one more little arm of my X there to finish. I'm going to use a, two 11s and a 15. Get that down to my check glass. And then I want to come through this top hole in my quadrilental. I'm also coming through my little seed beaded embellishment and the lentil opposite. Now I'm going to cross through to get to this next section that I need to embellish. I'm going to cross through at a diagonal my X coming through my 15 and 11s and my center check glass bead. Coming through these 11s and 15 on top. I'm going to go through my lentil as well. And I can go through all these embellishment beads too. My two 15s and 11. Being careful not to trap my project. I'm coming out the back hole here of my lentil. I'm going to jump to the front hole. And I'm ready to repeat this step here and add that pearl in the center. I'm picking up an 11 0, one of my pearls, and an 11 0. And I'm going to go through the top hole in my lentil opposite the lentil I'm coming out of. I want to stay on that inside hole there. Now I'm going to bridge this gap between my two lentils. I'm going to use three 15 O's for that. And I'm going to come through the hole opposite, top hole opposite the lentil I'm coming out of. I'm 
I'm going to finish my X with an 11. And I'm going to run through that check glass again. Pull tight. And you need one more 11 to finish this X up and to come through this top hole of my lentil. Still need to bridge that gap there. So I'm going to pick up three fifteens to do that. Come through that hole opposite the lentil I'm already coming out of. Pull that all tight. And now I want to come over here to do my little seed bead embellishment over here. I'm going to cross through at a diagonal my 11, my check glass, and my 11. Continue through my lentil. I'm going to jump from that back hole to the front hole. And now I'm in position to pick up a 15, an 11, and a 15 to bridge that gap there between those lentils where they are closest. So at this point, I'm in position to do another X over my six E beads. And I'm gonna just continue doing those X's and embellishing the centers of each one of these little cups until I get to the end of my bracelet. Uh, the end of the bracelet, I have one of these little half sections kind of hanging out here. And I'm gonna do that exactly the same way um, that I did this one. Um, so you do not have another section here to cross through your your check glass, your cla your um, pearl. Uh, so we're just going to skip that. I'm now almost to the very end of my project. I've come down this whole length of the bracelet, adding all my embellishments, and I have just a little bit left to go. I'm going to do my cross embellishment here over my 11s, pick up a 15, two 11s, and a check glass, a 3 millimeter, two more 11s, and a 15. I'm crossing this across my base of 11s here, coming through this hole the top of my lentil picking up a 15 an 11 and a 15 and embellishing that gap between my lentils where they are closest together I'm going to finish off my X here with a 15 and two 11s. I'm going to come through the check glass, the three millimeter check glass. Finish my last little arm of that cross, of that X with two 11s and a 15 coming through this front hole 
in my lentil. And I'm also gonna come through those three seed beads that I have here, my 15, 11, and 15. Come through the, come through the lentil again. Give a tug. I'm going to cross through diagonally through this cross. And through my lentil and my embellishments. Through my lentil. I'm going to jump up to this very last open hole, the top hole here in my lentil. And I'm going to add my last embellishment with an 11, my pearl, and by 11. Oops, there we go. And come through this last open hole of my last lentil. So now I have my completed length of bracelet. I can tie off this thread here. And to do that, I'm going to just come through my beads a couple times. My technique is to just add a couple overhand knots throughout my project and I follow back through my pattern. Adding a knot or two here and there as I go. Oops. Being careful not to get them looped around any of your other beads. And I want to cut my thread off somewhere in the middle of the project. So I'm going to give a good tug here. And now if you ever have this issue where you're just not getting good grip on your needle, you can use these flat nose pliers. Mine are bent, but you can use bent or flat nose. Give a little tug. Get a good grip. And unthread my needle. And I'm going to use my little slip and snips to get a really nice close cut of my thread. My bracelet is 99% done now. I have my top embellished, my back and top both done. Now I've got this nice little tail that I've left long enough to do my end here and attach my Potomac Crystal button. I just took my stop bead off. I don't want that on anymore. And I'm gonna thread this end of my thread. I'm gonna put my needle on. I use my flat nose pliers there to also squish the end of my thread so I can get a nice squat, a nice squat squished piece of um, thread through the eye of my needle. Okay. My needle and thread are coming out the bottom layer of my bracelet coming out through an 11-0. I'm going to use some 15s, or I'm sorry, going to use some 11s to attach my button. I'm going to pick up four or five. I think I'm going to pick up 
five with my 11s. And there is a top and bottom to this bead, to this button. Uh, the concave side that you can kind of put your finger in, um, I want that facing up. So I'm going to approach my button from the bottom and go through one of these holes. Pick up another three 11s and I'm going to go through one of the holes opposite of the hole that I'm coming out of. Pick up another five seed beads, which I'm running low on. And I'm gonna approach from the other side here and bring my needle and thread through my 11 bar and 11, making a little loop with my beads and my button on the end. I'm now gonna come back through my little line of 11 O's. I'm gonna come through three of them. And then I'm going to pick up another two And these other two, I'm going to bring over to one of these open holes in my button. So I'm coming through one of the open holes that I haven't used yet in my button. You can see on the side here how that'll look. On the top part of my button, I'm going to pick up 111, cross through the center 11, from the first three that I picked up, pick up another 11, and go through that last open hole on my button. Flip my button over, and I'm going to pick up another three, another two, sorry, another two 11s, and come through on this other side, this other line of 11s, going to come through the last or the first three of them. So I'm skipping two and going through three of them. And now it's just a matter of running back through all of these 11s and my clasp just like we did on the other side just to kind of give it a little bit more strength since this is part of your bracelet that's going to be getting um, a lot of wear and tear I want to start to tie off my thread and here looks like a really good place to do that. Just do a little overhand knot, give it a nice little tug and continue on going through my beads, through my 11s. And I'm going to stop right there, unthread my needle, use my slip and snips, get a nice close cut, and then I'm also going to add 
just a little dab of super glue any place where I find an end of my thread. And that's it. That is how you're going to make this really pretty, uh, it's really pretty bracelet with, it looks like a little oyster pearl in there. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed making it. Um, I've definitely enjoyed showing you guys how to make it um, and hopefully you will make one that you love and get to wear quite a bit. Thanks. Thank you.